There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life sea. Well, hello again. Uh, I'm Mike McDonald. Welcome to the channel. Uh, we are again here before you to try to answer some questions that we receive from uh, in reference to Bible information. This one we're going to cover this time is probably due to uh, television shows that have been uh, very popular for many years. And the question is, do people, and especially children, become angels at death? Uh, well, the simple answer to that is no. No human being has ever become an angel at any time. Uh, that actually is two questions. Uh, the first one is, what happens to humans when they die? Uh, and the second one is, what is an angel? Uh, let's go with the first one to begin with. Uh, so what happens to humans at death? Uh, to begin with, the word die uh, in the Greek means to separate. It never, ever means anything stops existing. It is always something is separating from something else. Uh, the word is thanesko. T-H-N-E-S-K-O. Thanesko. And it refers only to separation. So what actually separates? Uh, well, there's classifications of that also. So we have, if the person has reached the mental capacity to make a free will decision and has believed the information that Jesus Christ is the anointed Savior from God, he has been born again. He has been born spiritually. He has spiritual life as well as soul life as well as human life. Uh, Jesus explains this to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Uh, and specifically we have verses 3 through 6 tells, he's telling Nicodemus he must be spiritually alive. When he physically dies, when this individual physically dies, uh, his soul life and his spiritual life do not die they go immediately into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of the Father. We know this from uh, Acts chapter 7. Uh, Stephen, the first martyr, uh, we have a record of him being stoned to death. And around uh, verses 55 through the end of the chapter, we see Stephen dying from being stoned and he looks up into heaven and he sees Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of the Father ready to welcome his spirit into their presence. Also, Paul is trying to explain this uh, to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 around verse uh, 6. He's telling the Corinthians that he um, it doesn't mind being with them uh, he knows that but he knows that while he is with them physically, he is at home in the body, but he is absent from the Lord. But he would prefer to be absent from them and present with the Lord. So he, he's telling them that as soon as he dies physically, he is going to be present with the Lord. So we know that the soul and the spirit go immediately to be in the presence of the Lord. There, that person who dies will remain in a some form of intermediate body that is recognizable as the body that he left, the human body that he left. We know this from Luke chapter 16. Uh, Luke chapter 16, we have Jesus relating a real story. Uh, we know this is not a parable. Many people think this is a parable. It is not a parable. He's recalling an actual event. 
He names Lazarus, he names Abraham, and he names Moses. These are real people. These are people are never named in parables in Scripture. So this is a real event that Jesus is recalling. At the time of the rapture, the believer, the person who has made the proper decision, the believer will return with Christ and his actual physical body that he left here on earth will be resurrected and transformed into a resurrection body. We know this from 1 Thessalonians 4 verses uh, 13 through 18. This resurrection body, we know a little bit about that, this resurrection body will be similar to the resurrection body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know this from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 48 and 49. Also, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 20 and 21, both of those uh, sets of Scripture explain to us that our resurrection body will be similar to that of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this body will be His throughout eternity, and He will be with the Lord in this body forever. Now back to the question of what separates. If the person has reached the mental capacity to make a free will decision, and has not believed the information that Jesus Christ is the anointed Savior from God, he remains condemned. John chapter 3 verse 18. He has not been born spiritually, and he has never ever been able to worship God. John chapter 4 verse 24. So when he dies physically, his soul only separates from his physical body and his soul goes to a compartment in Hades called torments. The word torments is the name of a real compartment in Hades. This person will remain in torments in his intermediate recognizable body until the great white throne judgment at the end of the millennium. This judgment is uh, uh, recorded in Revelation 20, verse 11 through 15. <clears throat> now, at that time, he will be uh, transformed into a resurrection body to death. This is at the great white throne judgment and sent to the lake of fire in conscious existence separated from God and tormented day and night forever. Revelation 20 verse 10. Now with both of these classifications of mankind, I have qualified their description with, quote, if the person has reached the mental capacity to make a free will decision or not. Okay, so uh, now, if the person has not reached that mental capacity for any reason, uh, be that uh, mental incompetence, be that damage at birth, be that uh, a, an infant that dies at birth, uh, a, a baby that, that uh, dies uh, prior to reaching an age of being able to uh, understand the question, for any reason, his condemnation is removed at his physical death, and his soul goes immediately to be with the Lord. We have an example of that uh, in reference to infants in 2 Samuel chapter 12, uh, verse 22 and 23 uh, actually explains it. But uh, this incident is David. Uh, being told of his the discipline that he's going to undergo as a result of his sin with Bathsheba and his murder of Bathsheba's husband Uriah. As a result of that, Nathan tells him that the child 
that he and Bathsheba produced is going to die. And David immediately goes into fasting and mourning, hoping that through prayer he will be able to change the Lord's mind on that. Well, uh, when we get to uh, uh, right before uh, verse 22, his servants tell him that the child has died. And immediately upon hearing that, he stops fasting and mourning, cleans up, and requests food, and his servants are completely puzzled. They ask him why, and he says, Before the child died, I had no way of knowing whether or not I could change the Lord's mind. But now that the child has died, that is over. I will, he will not be able to come back to me but I will be able to go to where he is. David knew that that child was in heaven with the Lord at that time. Now, God can do this and still remain just uh, and the justifier of the ungodly, which the child was at the time, because Christ paid the penalty for all sin. That includes the sin that God credited with that child at his birth. Adam's sin, the sin that was transmitted through the male genetically to the child. That sin had been paid for and the child, uh, God could easily at that point uh, remove his condemnation and he is currently with the Lord and will remain there uh, forever. Uh, Romans 3, uh, verses 25 and 26 explain that uh, all sin has been paid for uh, and that God is just in what He does. And 1 John 2, uh, verses two verse 2 explains clearly that Christ not only paid the penalty for our sins, but the sins of the entire world. Now that covers believers, it covers non-believers, and it covers those who for any reason have not been able to make that choice. So the answer is no human has ever or will ever become an angel. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, note those uh, and we will try to uh, answer them also. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that Life sea and when I am tossed about it sends out a light that